Hi everyone, it's Paul from One Cast One Fish, and today we're going to start diving into the Garmin Striker Vivid, specifically the Clearview Sonar. Now before we begin, if you have not already, be sure to hit that subscribe button, and be sure you hit the bell so you're notified of the next One Cast One Fish video. Seriously, hit the subscribe button. Like right now. Clearview is Garmin's version of what many of us are used to generically calling down imaging or down scan. However, even though each fish finder manufacturer may have a different name for its down scanning sonar, they all basically do the same thing. And that's help you see a clearer view of what's beneath your boat or kayak. In this video, I'm going to explain exactly how Clearview Sonar works, some of its advantages and disadvantages, what menu options and features you have on the Garmin Striker series equipped with Clearview, and finally, we're going to do some breakdowns and comparisons between 2D Sonar and Clearview Sonar images. Now, to begin explaining what Clearview Sonar is and how it works, first we need to have a general understanding of how 2D Sonar functions. So, I'm going to give a brief overview and touch on the major points of 2D Sonar functionality. Now, if you want to take a deep dive into 2D sonar functionality, I'll leave a link to another one of my videos in the description that to date has over half a million views and it'll take you on an in-depth journey of 2D sonar. 2D sonar is what most of us are used to seeing when we think of fish finders. With 2D sonar, the transducer sends sound waves through the water column and once those sound waves hit an object, they return back to the transducer. The sound wave data is then processed by the receiver unit and convert it to an image that you see on your fish finder screen. As new information is relayed to your unit, your screen will scroll from right to left, with the newest information appearing on the right. With 2D sonar, the area of coverage is the shape of a 3D cone, and selecting different frequencies will change the shape of that sonar cone. Selecting the 200kHz option will give you a narrow cone, about 15 degrees with the Garmin Striker, while selecting the 77kHz will give you a wider cone, about 45 degrees with the Garmin Striker. Now, the major takeaway with 2D Sonar is that the information that you're receiving is from within a 3D cone. So, if 2D Sonar is relaying information based on a 3D cone beneath your transducer, what exactly is Clearview Sonar relaying back? Clearview Sonar technology utilizes an ultra high frequency 455kHz or 800kHz sonar beam. That high frequency sonar beam sweeps a thin area of the water column to take detailed images. Unlike 2D Sonar's cone, Clearview only is going to show you a small sliver of information beneath your transducer. However, that information is extremely high in detail. These images produce a high resolution snapshot of the area beneath your boat or kayak and gives you the ability to see structure and fish with high detail and clarity. Reading Clearview Sonar is similar to reading the traditional 2D Sonar in that the images are going to scroll from right to left on the screen with newer information displayed on the right. Now let's look at some of the advantages and disadvantages of Clearview Sonar. We'll start with the advantages. Clearview provides a highly detailed picture of what's underneath your boat or kayak. And you can see the amount of detail presented in the following images on the screen. With Clearview, you can really get a good view down into that structure and see what's really going on in ways that 2D sonar just is not able to do. And part of that reason is the higher frequencies that the Garmin Striker Clearview operates at. The Garmin Striker Vivid, for example, Clearview operates at an amazing 455kHz and 800kHz, well over double the frequency of normal 2D sonar. Clearview can be used as an additional tool to help you identify structure, fish, and bait clearly. If you look at the following images, you can clearly see the definition and detail of the structure that Clearview provides. As you can see in this image, the 2D sonar shows the structure as more of a mass, and it's difficult to see the individual fish within that structure. However, with Clearview, that structure and those fish are more defined. The same is true when looking for bait balls, which show up with more definition using the Clearview sonar. Now, when seeing bait in open water, both 2D and Clearview sonar work just fine. But, when that bait may be tight to cover or structure, 2D sonar tends to miss the finer details, while Clearview is going to alert you to the presence of the bait on that structure. Clearview sonar can be used in conjunction with 2D sonar to give an in-depth overview of the water column beneath and around your boat or kayak. There are things that 2D sonar does better, such as letting you see a wider area than Clearview. And this makes 2D sonar a great searching tool. And then using the Clearview sonar strength, to get a more detailed image of what you're seeing on the 2D sonar. Together, 
2D sonar and Clearview make a powerful combination when used correctly and can definitely increase your fish catching chances. Now let's look at some of the disadvantages. With Clearview sonar, only a narrow beam of information is being relayed back, and you're only seeing a small portion of what's in the water underneath your boat or kayak. As we learned earlier, the Clearview sonar in the Garmin Striker Vivid operates at 455 kHz or 800 kHz, which provides a very detailed image, but only in a very small sliver of the water column directly below the transducer. This means there could be a lot happening around your boat that's not being shown. In order to have the clear view functionality and capabilities, you have to have a capable transducer and fish finder, which of course is going to increase the overall cost of the equipment you need in order to have the clear view capability. The clear view capable transducer is also larger than the traditional 2D sonar transducer, which could be an issue for some depending on your mounting preferences. Clearview sonar can be used in conjunction with 2D sonar to give an in-depth overview of the water column beneath and around your boat or kayak. Now I know I just said this was an advantage earlier, so let me explain. 2D sonar as a combo screen is a powerful tool, as you get to see the best of both worlds at the same time. And it's also a great way to operate your sonar. However, if you have a smaller screen that's split between traditional sonar and Clearview, it can be difficult to make out some of the small details of fish that would be more visible on a larger screen. Clearview, just like the side viewing sonar and even the newest live scoped equipped units, benefit from a larger screen in my opinion to give their full potential. Now there's a lot of variables such as your eyesight, lighting conditions, and distance your fish finders mounted from your face that will all play a role in determining which screen size may be best for you. Now that we have a better understanding of how Clearview sonar works and some of its advantages and disadvantages, Let's look at the Clearview Sonar menu options available on the Garmin Striker Vivid series of fish finders. Let's start at the home screen. Scroll down and select Clearview. Now press the menu key. With the Striker Vivid Clearview menu, we have the option to adjust the range, brightness, contrast, zoom, overlay numbers, or enter the Sonar Setup menu. Let's start by selecting range. You can adjust the range of the depth scale that appears on the right side of the screen. Automatic ranging keeps the bottom within the lower third of the sonar screen and can be useful for tracking the bottom where there's slow or moderate terrain changes. Or you can also adjust the range manually. Now let's select brightness. You can adjust the brightness of the clear view screen with three auto presets, auto low, auto medium, or auto high. You can also control the brightness manually as well. However, for me, I find auto medium to be a good general starting point. Now let's look at contrast. The default contrast setting is 50%, but in my opinion, of all the settings for Clearview, the contrast can have the biggest effect on whether you're going to see or not see your fish or structure. Personally, I prefer running my contrast at about 60 to 70% manually and adjusting from there based on lighting conditions. Now let's select zoom. We can select from no zoom, bottom lock, which locks the zoom to the bottom, manual, where you can manually zoom where you want, auto, which will attempt to zoom where the action is on the screen, or split zoom, which will show a zoom view on half the screen and the normal view on the other half. Now we'll select overlay numbers. This is where you'll turn on or off the number overlays that are on your clear view screen, such as device voltage, depth, speed, water temp, and the time, along with the navigational insert or the compass tape if you want those visible as well. Now let's select sonar setup. Here we have the menu options for adding a depth line, adjusting our scroll speed, our color schemes, noise reject settings, or to restore our fish finder the factory default settings. Let's start by selecting the depth line to show. The depth line is an adjustable horizontal line on the sonar screen that you can adjust up or down by using the keypad. And the corresponding depth of that line is indicated on the right side of the screen. Next is scroll speed. This is where you can adjust the scroll speed of how fast your screen moves from right to left on the Clearview sonar screen. Next, we're going to look at all of our color schemes. The Garmin Vivid Clearview gives you a lot of color schemes to choose from, so let's take a look. Since we're on the topic of color, 
Let's talk briefly about my favorite color schemes. In general, I like to use a color scheme that has a blue or amber tone to it, such as ice blue or amber. I prefer these two colors because when adjusted properly, it seems like the details of fish are highlighted a little bit better and tend to stand out more. I tend to use the amber in lower light conditions and the ice blue in brighter conditions. Now, you'll have to see what color you prefer, and remember, no matter what color you choose, contrast and brightness must be adjusted properly for the images to be optimal. Now we'll select the option to adjust our noise reject settings. Here we can adjust our interference, surface noise, and TVG, or time variable gain. Let's start with interference. This setting adjusts the sensitivity to reduce the effects of interference from nearby sources of noise. When you adjust the interference settings from off through low, medium, and high, noise is gradually removed. You should use the lowest interference setting that achieves the desired improvement for removing interference from the screen. Now let's look at surface noise. Surface noise is caused by the interference between your transducer and water. You can hide that surface noise to help reduce the clutter on your screen. TVG, or time variable gain. This also is used to help reduce clutter and noise around the surface. However, this control is best used for situations when you want to control and suppress the clutter or noise near the water surface, but it also allows for the display of targets near the surface that would otherwise be hidden or masked by adjusting your surface noise. Our last selection is Restore Sonar Defaults. Like the name implies, this is going to restore your sonar to factory default settings. Now that we know how Clearview Sonar works, its advantages and disadvantages, and how to navigate the Clearview menu features on the Garmin Striker Vivid, let's move on to some side-by-side -side comparisons and break down some sonar images. We're going to start right away with this image of some structure. First, I want to point out the obvious. This large piece of structure does show on both screens. But, if you notice, the structure is a lot clearer when looking at the Clearview sonar. Using traditional sonar only, this structure could be missed due to the weaker return trailing off at the far edge. Now looking at both these screens, I can see that fish are present around the structure. But the clear view does give me the advantage of breaking those fish returns out a little bit more from the surrounding structure a little bit better. Look here, I can distinctly see three fish on the clear view sonar screen. While looking at the traditional screen, you could see one, possibly two. Here's another example where I see two distinct fish on the clear view, but it only looks like one on traditional sonar. Now before we move on to more images, I want to point out this bait cluster right on the structure that you can see on the Clearview sonar screen. That same bait cluster is almost invisible on the traditional sonar. And it's this target separation clarity that allows Clearview to give you the advantage on the water. Let's pause our sonar right here and look at this open water image. Here it's pretty obvious that both screens are showing good returns for these suspended fish. And in this instance, both sonars would probably be able to help you get on those fish. However, it does appear the Clearview sonar does separate those fish returns out from the background noise a little bit better. Let's pause the sonar right here. Here I can see what appears to be a fish on the traditional sonar. But if we look at the clear view, we can see that this is actually two fish. You can also see there's other fish here hanging out on top of and within these weeds. Let's pause the sonar again here. You can see how well that bait ball shows up on the Clearview sonar compared to the traditional sonar. Wow, that was a lot of information. But I hope it cleared up a few things for you in regard to the Garmin Striker Clearview sonar. And as always, if you have any questions, please feel free to comment down below. And we'll see you next time on the water.